Thursday Bram, and the reason that I get to talk about writing is because I've been doing it for a really long time. Um, I've written for CNET, GigaOM, uh, InformIT. I saw Audrey wander in. Where'd... I've written for Audrey. <laughs> um, so I also really, really, really enjoy trying out new tools and new workflows, which can get in the way of the writing, but you can all learn from my bad experiences. So I've been writing professionally full-time since 07. All right, so the first rule of writing with open source tools is you actually have to write. If you don't want to write, well, <laughs> This might not be the best talk to be in. Um, even if you are really into using the right tools and experimenting with interesting new technology and all of those things, if we're talking about writing, you have to sit down and write. So use whatever is working for you now if tools are going to get in the way. If going back to like paper and pencil is the best way for you to actually write, that's fine, that's cool. That, if that's what it takes to write, write. All right, so in this talk, I'm gonna talk about four types of writing and the different tools that can be used for them. Um, documentation, blogs, or articles-based websites, um, books, and then one-off documents like resumes. Uh, a lot of these tools can be used for uh, fiction writing or other types of writing as well as these nonfiction examples. But I kind of figured if you're at Open Source Bridge, you probably at the very least have an interest in writing about some of the stuff that you're working on, which doesn't qualify as fiction. So that's kind of where I started from. And I've also had experience with all four of these types of writing. So I get to talk about real world stuff and how it can go horribly, horribly wrong. All right, so documentation. Documentation is awesome. I know that writing it can be painful, but it's a necessary evil if, even if you don't really like writing. So this is sort of my workflow for uh, documentation projects. I like Markdown, I love Markdown. Yes! Um, I use Sublime Text for the actual place where I'm writing. Um, and depending on what project I'm working on, it's probably getting shoved up to GitHub. It might wind up on some place like Read the Docs. Sort of depends. So why do I love Markdown? I love markup languages in general uh, because you can just get into the flow of writing and just add little things and suddenly it looks pretty and it has the links it's supposed to and you didn't have to go mess around with keyboard shortcuts or anything. Uh, Markdown in particular I'm a fan of because it's got an ecosystem. There's really great Sublime Text plugins, there's even WordPress plugins, there's, honestly I, I haven't used a lot of tools that doesn't have a Markdown plugin at this point. However, there are lots of alternatives. A lot of people are fans of restructured text, and restructured text has some benefits over Markdown. It's a lot more flexible. Uh, if there isn't already a plugin, you're going to be able to do a little bit more with restructured text and building on to whatever tool that you're using. But there's a little bit more of a learning curve in my experience. Markdown is really, really easy to get started with. Even if you are only memorizing what to do for bold or italic or hyperlinks, you can get in the flow of using it a lot faster than anything else I've run into. Um, that's why I also use Markdown when I'm writing blogs. Uh, I use Markdown, again, Sublime Text, uh, Sublime Text, oh, and then uh, WordPress with Jetpack for Markdown. Um, Sublime Text also has plugins that allow you to push things directly to WordPress. And then depending on the site that we're talking about, Jekyll might be an option or another static site generator. I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of other content management systems. Uh, WordPress is really full-featured at this point. 
And one of the things I've noticed from working with a lot of clients is that everybody likes making their own content management system. And for the love of all that you hold dear, please do not create your own content management system. Please. Uh, for one thing, it means that you will be writing your content management system when you should be writing the content to go into your content management system. Uh, it also means that you probably won't start writing for a couple of years. It might take you a while to get through all the nuances of content management. Um, and you might also just wind up going absolutely out of your mind. And if you bring anybody else to help on your project, let's say writers, they will have to learn a whole new system and they will also go completely out of their minds. There are major tech blogs that use their own custom rolled uh, content management systems and they make me cry anytime they ask for a new article because I have to do all sorts of new things. Sometimes I even have to learn a whole new markup language. That is doing it wrong. Um, in terms of choosing an existing content management system, one of the reasons I like WordPress is the same reason that I like Markdown. There's an existing ecosystem. I don't have to start from scratch on a lot of things. There are other content management systems with pretty solid ecosystems. Uh, Drupal and Joomla are probably some of the better known ones. But once again, learning curve, WordPress has more tutorials out there, more people who are already using it who are helpful. That's, that's very useful in my opinion. Um, so while it's less, less thought about uh, for a lot of writers, version control makes a huge difference in your writing. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're using for version control, just use whatever you're already using, but being able to roll back to old, stop making that face, Georgia. Georgia's talking about Git later, and she has feelings and is making faces about it. Strong preferences. Um, I prefer Git and GitHub because that's what I already use, but if you have other strong preferences, that's also totally fine. It does not bother me which particular side you're on as long as you are taking steps to version control your writing. And the reason for that is that just like any other type of project, you're going to make changes. Editing is is crucial to the writing process and understanding what changes happen when can help you figure out everything that you need to do to get your project ready. Uh, especially if you work with somebody else to help you with that editing, knowing who did what is very useful when you don't like their edits. All right, so books. And here, here is my dirty secret. I use Google Docs when I'm working on book projects or anything really, really long because the odds that I'm going to, use, to let somebody else look at it go up dramatically. And a lot of the editors who do editing professionally and are more likely to do a really good job editing your stuff aren't always excited about using open source, aren't excited about using brand new things, aren't excited about using anything but Microsoft Word that is exactly how they know to do everything and they can track changes and they know where every button is and they've been using it for almost as long as it's existed. So I use Google Docs with them. But once I get out of actually creating a document and I get all the writing and the editing done, there's actually a couple of different really good options for uh, layout for getting it ready to either go to a printer or going to a uh, ebook uh, distributor or something like that. So Scribus, uh, I've heard it compared most closely to Adobe InDesign. It's, it's a little bit different um, than InDesign, but it's pretty easy to get using. There's a lot of good tutorials for it. Uh, it's a pretty solid piece of software. There's also LaTeX. I've also heard it pronounced LaTeX. I'm not going to uh, choose. I'm just going to say LaTeX because that's what I'm used to. Um, that's got a little bit more of a learning curve. And then no matter what your, 
your tool of choice is, you're probably going to wind up with a PDF, um, possibly an EPUB, some sort of proprietary publishing format. Say if you want to put it on Amazon, they took the EPUB format and then did mildly unholy things to it. Um, uh, it could be worse. Some of the other proprietary formats make me cringe a lot more. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a lot of different places that your writing can wind up, especially with a long form project. So starting from something like Scribus or LaTeX that you can push out to different formats is really, really useful at that stage. So going back to that whole, whole dirty secret that I just admitted. Um, when you're working on a writing project, it's not always going to be possible to just stick to open source tools. The, the problem with a lot of writing projects is the, the question of who has to interact with it, especially on the way to the final product. And I love open source software. I love that there are so many amazing tools out there, but in some cases, I've seen it get in the way. Um, I, I will admit, I had like a 30 email long thread argument with one of my editors of, why can't I just give you uh, HTML that I've written in already for you and you dump it in? I don't know what to do with that. I have never used HTML. I need you to send me a Microsoft Word document. Uh, it's, it makes me sad, but... That's the thing about releasing things out into the world where other humans are. Not all other humans have even heard of this whole open source thing. So if, if you have to let it take the back seat to make sure that you get the work done, it's a step worth taking. Uh, on top of the actual words, having images. Images make everything better. Do you, my pretty slides totally make this talk better. Um, and you can, you can stick to working within the open source community on a lot of things. Uh, I use a lot of Creative Commons images when I'm doing like blog posts. Even like a lot of my ebook covers start with an, a Creative Commons image. Uh, Flickr actually is one of my favorite places to look for Creative Commons images because their search tools are really good. Uh, you can also build your own. GIMP and Inkscape are both great tools. Uh, Inkscape is kind of like Adobe Illustrator, if you've seen that. GIMP is more of a Photoshop photo editing pro product. Uh, and both of them, there's tons of tutorials and ways to learn it pretty quickly. So if you need either to edit photos or you need to create your own logos or uh, covers for your book or graphs to go into your blog post, there's tons and tons of options. And circling back to documentation in particular, the more images, the more examples that show how things work, the happier your readers are probably going to be. So it's worth the time invested to figure out how to add the images to whatever you're writing. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so resumes or, you know, one page flyers or whatever you're doing. Honestly, whatever you're building it in doesn't really matter. I mean, it's nice to use a tool that you like that is easy to work with, but you're only going to be in it for a little while, so doesn't doesn't really care. Um, I know a few people who use LaTeX and keep the canonical version of their resume in that. I know people who use Google Docs. I know people who use restructured text. I know people who use HTML. Um, whatever, whatever makes you happy. But here's the important thing: your resume should be in a format that you can use version control on, uh, or most documents, honestly. But resumes in particular, because hopefully everybody is continuing on 
like in their lives and adding more things to their resumes. So being able to tell the difference between the one that, that one file that you made when you graduated college or that one file that you created two weeks ago or something in between is kind of crucial. You do not want to send the wrong one out. So yeah, version control. And then PDF all the things. Uh, especially with resumes, but with a lot of other things. Uh, PDF means that if somebody opens up your resume and wants to tinker with it, they can't. If somebody opens it up and wants to print it, it's already ready to go. If somebody wants to forward it around, there's not a lot of ways they can screw it up. And other people screwing up your writing is a valid concern. Other people are just so difficult sometimes. <clears throat> so when it comes to open source software, everybody scratches their own itch, right? Everybody makes the, the plugin that makes their world a little bit better. But when it comes to writing, as you know, a species, we've been doing this writing thing for a while, a couple thousand years. We have most of the major problems kind of figured out and we know that they're kind of standard across the writing process, which means in a lot of cases, our itches have already been solved or have already been scratched. So that there's not, not that many uh, opportunities to create entirely new pieces of open source software for the writing process, which I see as a plus. Uh, so for instance, there's a really great open source tool for script writing uh, called Celtx. It's got all of these different templates built into it. You can go to town just writing any type of script that you want. It even sort of guides you through the process. The same goes for all sorts of different writing. There's tons of tools with templates built in, there's tons of different content management systems, there's all sorts of opportunities to not have to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> oh, I almost forgot one. So there's LaTeX also. LaTeX is one of the oldest open source projects, which, I mean, goes along with that whole we've been doing writing for a while thing. Um, and it does have a bit of a learning cliff rather than a learning curve, but it also is an incredibly valuable tool and because it has that learning cliff, people have been building things to make it easier. So for instance, there's um, tools that give you templates just for LaTeX. There's also, oh man, I'm gonna screw this up because I don't remember, but there's, um, Links? Licks. Licks. Thank you. Uh, that is just fantastic to, to use as well. So there's, there's lots of opportunities to play with those sorts of tools and dive really deep if you want to go down the rabbit hole. It's just kind of the question of how far down that hole you want to go. All right, so sort of switching around the question of open source in writing, there are actually, you know, a lot of open sourced books. There's an author by the name of Cory Doctorow who makes a lot of his stuff available um, under usually Creative Commons licenses. Uh, so there's a lot of fiction. There's also a lot of nonfiction now too. I'm personally a big fan of using Creative Commons licenses for my work when I want to make it available because it's kind of already a tested format. I've seen writing put up under everything from MIT to AGPL, but <laughs> I'm not always entirely sure how to treat those. And I've seen some other people sort of question, so this is, this is a novel, it's under AGPL, what, what do I do now? <laughs> Whereas Creative Commons is meant for media. It's meant for images and writing and these other types of content. So there's, there's less of a question of what to do with a novel that's under Creative Commons. All right, 
So since I've been writing for a while, a couple of things have really stood out to me as the big wins, the things that have really, really made an improvement in my workflow, in my efficiency, all of that. Markdown is my one true love. It has made my life so much better. Um, other people's plugins have also been crucial uh, for everything from sublime text to content management system. Being able to just search around and find something that somebody has already built has made my life a lot better. And then there's the weird stuff. Um, sometimes some of us like to go on places like GitHub and see just what craziness other people have gotten up to. Uh, there's, there's some interesting writing tools that have been written and uploaded to GitHub, some really crazy stuff. There's a uh, fiction author by the name of uh, Jamie Todd Rubin, who in particular is my current favorite for just random scripts he's written. Uh, he's got a whole set of tools for if you use Evernote that he's created, um, a bunch of word count stuff uh, at one point, he also had one that was like tracking the weather in his area to the number of words that he was writing, like just very, very intensely analytical about his process stuff. And they're really fun to download and then tinker with. So other people have been kind of really crucial to this whole personal process of writing. So uh, Jamie Todd Rubin though, definitely, Definitely look at his stuff. All right. Oh, man. I'm going really, really fast. I'm sorry. I'm going faster than I expected. But here's, here's my sum up slide, so we're almost done. Uh, so in short, if, if you're not writing, you need to write. Uh, your tools do not matter if you're not writing. Uh, you should really write with some sort of markup language, which everyone makes you personally happy. Uh, don't build your own CMS, please. Uh, plan for collaboration. And then figure out how you're getting your writing to your readers. So hopefully, if you've gone to the trouble of writing something, it is going to be in somebody else's hands someday. Uh, I know a few people who write and then shove it on a in the back of their drawer or on a disk or in a hard drive that they purposefully plan to lose uh, so nobody ever sees it. But with writing, you don't get better unless people see it. You don't get to know that you've actually finished a project until somebody sees it. So hopefully, hopefully you're going to show it off to people. And all of these open source tools make it really easy to get to that point. You can create beautiful documents, you can create beautiful books, you can create great resumes and great blogs, all without leaving the open source community. So I, I used some open source stuff in this presentation, and that's me. So questions. 